The Employees Providence Fund or EPF said total investment income for the first half of the year grew 25% to 34.05 billion ringgit. Total gross investment income for the second quarter stood at 14.77 billion ringgit, down 2.3% year on year. Equities continued to be the main contributor of income during the quarter, bringing in 7.89 billion ringgit, while fixed income instruments contributed 5.28 billion ringgit. The EPF said, as part of its internal policy to ensure a healthy portfolio, it wrote down 210 million ringgit for listed equities, compared with 1.66 billion ringgit for the same quarter in 2020, following the continued recovery across global markets. After netting off these write-downs, it recorded 14.56 billion ringgit in investment income for the second quarter, 8% higher than the 13.46 billion ringgit recorded in the previous corresponding period. The pension fund's investment assets stood at 989.14 billion ringgit, of which 37% were invested abroad. Its CEO, Datuk Sri Amir Hamza Azizan, said the EPF delivered a resilient performance in the first half of the year, driven by the progressive recovery of equity markets and most asset classes amid the global rebound. For the remaining half of the year, he said Malaysia's recovery prospects hinge on how the COVID-19 situation plays out. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob announced several initiatives under the Malaysian Family Welfare Agenda on housing, including rent waiver for affected groups and extension of moratorium on rental payments for the People's Housing Project, better known by its Malay acronym PPR. According to Bernama, the Premier launched today Rumah Ikram Keluarga Malaysia, a housing initiative for those who have lost their sources of income or whose incomes have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Under the initiative, 2,000 units under PPR in Kuala Lumpur, Selangor, Kedah, Kelantan and Johor will be made available at a monthly rent of 124 ringgit for a maximum of two years. This, he said, will benefit some 10,000 occupants who will also enjoy rental exemption of up to six months, beginning from the date of handing over of keys for their units. This rental waiver will be borne by the government, involving an allocation of more than 3 million ringgit. Ismail Sabri also announced that the moratorium on rental payments for existing PPR occupants under the Housing and Local Government Ministry will be extended until the end of next year. This will benefit about 10,000 households of 50,000 occupants, with a financial implication of 18.84 million ringgit for the government. The Kuala Lumpur High Court dismissed Datin Sri Rosmah Manso's application to remove Datuk Sri Gopal Sri Ram from leading the prosecution and, in effect, nullify her corruption proceedings involving the 1.25 billion ringgit solar hybrid project for rural schools in Sarawak. Rosmah, in her application, was also seeking to be acquitted and discharged, arising from the declarations sought. Justice Muhammad Zaini Mazlan ruled that Sri Ram's appointment as a senior deputy public prosecutor by then Attorney General Tan Sri Tommy Thomas was valid. This is according to Section 376, Subsection 3 of the Criminal Procedure Code, which refers to the power of the Attorney General to appoint fit and proper persons to be deputy public prosecutors and to designate any deputy public prosecutors as senior deputy public prosecutors. The judge also dismissed an application by Rosmas lawyer, Dato Akbadin Abdul Qadir, for a stay of proceedings in order to file an appeal against the decision in the Court of Appeal. As it stands, Rosmas' defence will tentatively begin on October 5th. FGV Holdings is believed to be eyeing its maiden oil palm venture in India's state of Telangana. News reports indicated that FGV representatives met government officials there on Wednesday to propose the setting up of an oil palm processing unit in Sasela and other parts of the state. The New Indian Express, quoting KT Ramarao, 
who is Telangana's Minister for Municipal Administration and Urban Development, Industries and Commerce and Information Technology, reported that one of FGV's representatives recognised the Telangana state government's efforts to encourage large-scale cultivation of oil palm and spoke of how oil palm cultivation can be profitable for farmers and generate employment there. It was reported that FGV also invited Ramarao to visit Malaysia to study the prospects of oil palm. According to FGV's website, the company, which has yet to establish a presence in India, already has operations in Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Cambodia, Pakistan, Turkey, France, Spain and the US. It manages a total land bank of 439,275 hectares in Malaysia and Indonesia to produce about 3 million tonnes of CPO annually. FGV's shares closed unchanged at 1 ringgit 33 today for a market capitalisation of 4.85 billion ringgit. The Department of Statistics Malaysia said inflation, as measured by the Consumer Price Index or CPI, rose 2% in August 2021 from a year earlier, easing from the 2.2% year-on-year increase in July. The inflationary pressure was due to a rise in the index's components, including the transport and food and non-alcoholic beverages segments. Chief Statistician Datuk Sri Dr Mohamad Uzir Mahidin said, Transport continued to record a double-digit increase since March, rising 11% in August from a year earlier. The prices of food and non-alcoholic beverages were up by 1.2% last month, against a 1.3% year-on-year growth in July. Meanwhile, the index for food away from home rose 1% and housing, water, electricity, gas and other fuels registered a marginal increase of 0.6%. Year-to-date, the CPI increased 2.3% between January and August 2021 from a year earlier. On a monthly basis, the August reading was unchanged compared with the previous months.